Let us begin. My Lord Jesus Christ, you have made this journey to die for me with love unutterable. And I have so many times unworthily abandoned you. But now I love you with my whole heart. Because I love you, I repent sincerely for having ever offended you. Pardon me, my God, and permit me to accompany you on this journey. You go to die for love of me. I wish also my beloved Redeemer to die for love of thee. My Jesus, I will live and die always united to you. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. First station, Jesus is condemned to death. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests with the elders and scribes and the whole council held a consultation and they bound Jesus and led him away and delivered him to Pilate. And they all condemned him and said, he deserves to die. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and sat down on the judgment seat at a place called the pavement, but in Hebrew, Gabbatha. Then he handed Jesus over to them to be crucified. God did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all. Almighty God, whose most dear son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain and entered not into glory before he was crucified. Mercifully grant that we walking in the way of the cross may find it none other than the way of life and peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and mortal one, have mercy upon us. Our artist for the first station is Susan Johnson. Susan. Yes. This station is always hard for me because it wasn't just the people who were against Jesus or didn't understand him that condemned him, but even his supporters. I think my first true understanding of this came through musicals like Jesus Christ Superstar or Godspell where you could feel people being taken in and saying, crucify him, even when they had just been listening to him teach hours before that. Over the years, the Palm Sunday liturgy has come to truly be the place where I have just an inkling of how that might have felt. One minute we are out in the parking lot cheering Hosanna, and the next we are saying, crucify him. Human beings can be really offering awful to one another. In my opinion, one version of this in modern day is the death penalty. We as a society have essentially said, crucify him. My station recognizes the names of the 48 individuals who are currently on federal death row, sentenced to death by the US, not a specific state. When you list these names out, you can see Jesus in them, J-E-S-U-S -S, in each of the rows. Jesus is in everyone. I created this on a previously used canvas that I didn't like but hadn't thrown out either. I painted over it retaining only the word dignity from the layer beneath. 
Symbolically, it felt good to repurpose a Kansas rather than set it aside as no good anymore, as we often do with prisoners. Also, it feels like it recognizes the dignity that lies in every one of us. The 48 names of current prisoners are written in white and J-E-S-U-S -S is highlighted in yellow from them. Thanks. Second station, Jesus takes up his cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. Jesus went out bearing his own cross to the place called the place of a skull, which is called in Hebrew, Golgotha. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. Like a lamb, he was led to the slaughter. And like a sheep that before its shearers is mute. So he opened not his mouth. Worthy is a lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. The Lord has laid on him the inequity of us all. The transgression of my people was he stricken. Almighty God, whose beloved Son willingly endured the agony and shame of the cross for our redemption, give us courage to take up our cross and follow him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. Third station, Jesus falls the first time. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking the form of a servant and was born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our maker, for he is the Lord our God. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. O oh God, you know us to be set in the midst of so many and great dangers that by reason of the frailty of our nature, we cannot always stand upright. Grant us such strength and protection as may support us in all dangers and carry us through all temptations, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and mortal one, have mercy upon us. Our artist for station three is Malia Escobar. Is Malia with us? I don't believe so. So I will read the, the reflection that Malia submitted for this station. It was healing to be created making this station. 
but also sad to contemplate Jesus falling from exhaustion as he carried his own cross. My first vision of the image I wanted to create was Jesus in silhouette. It was a dark day for humanity. Fourth station, Jesus meets his afflicted mother. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. To what can I liken you? To what can I compare you, O daughter of Jerusalem? What likeness can I use to comfort you O virgin daughter of Zion, for vast as the sea is your ruin, blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. The Lord will be your everlasting light, and your days of mourning shall be ended. A sword will, will pierce your own soul also. And fill your heart with bitter pain. O oh God, who in the passion of your son, a sword of grief should pierce the soul of the Blessed Virgin Mary, his mother. Mercifully grant that your church, having shared with her in his passion, may be made worthy to share in the joys of his resurrection, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, Holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. Our artist for station four is Cindy Knighton. Cindy. Um, for those of, that have or have parents, you may have experienced a relationship that created a bond unlike any others you may have. And some of you may be a parent and have this similar relationship. Parents do not want to see their child suffer, nor do they want to witness the death of their child. I cannot imagine the pain and grief that is felt in this situation. Jesus and his mother have a special connection with each other. They meet and embrace before he continues on this journey. I'm sure she is suffering as she watches her son in pain and agony. Even though she is grief stricken, she knows his sacrifice is an important one. Thank you, Cindy. Fifth station. The cross is laid on Simon of Cyrene. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. As they led Jesus away, they came upon a man of, Cy of Cyrene, Simon by name, who was coming in from the country and laid on him the cross to carry it behind Jesus. If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Whoever does not bear their own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Heavenly Father, his blessed son came not to be served, but to serve. Bless all who following in his steps give themselves to the service of others, that with wisdom, patience, and courage, they may minister in his name to the suffering, the friendless, and the needy, for the love of him who laid down his life for us 
your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy, and mighty. holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. Our artist for the fifth station is Chris Palmer. Is Chris with us? Tradition says that Simon was a North African Jew who traveled to Jerusalem for Passover. It is thought that he was known to the early Christian community and this is why he was specifically named in the telling of the story of the way of the cross. Perhaps Simon was in the crowd on his way elsewhere when he was compelled by a Roman soldier to step in and catch the cross Jesus was about to drop from exhaustion. Simon then takes on this burden for a time following Jesus as he walked. It's likely he heard who this Jesus was, a Jew, and why he was carrying a cross on his way to a hill called the Place of a Skull. Simon may have been in the crowd just to see this spectacle, or perhaps he was stopped on his way to where he was going. But now he becomes immersed in this moment of pain, struggle, injustice, jeering, inevitability, and mourning. I can only imagine the noise, the smells, heightened emotions, my heart rushing with fear as I am compelled to take part in this barbarism. Tradition says that the experience changed Simon and his example is held up as a call for doing good work for others. But I look at Simon's story as a call to be open to the moment when God steps in and puts me in a spot I wasn't expecting to be in, a moment to allow God to lead me and allow myself to follow, no matter how difficult. Not just to follow in service to others, but to follow as I breathe, as I live, as I think. Can I trust God that much? Truly, this is the way of the cross.
Six station. A woman wipes the face of Jesus. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. We have seen him without beauty or majesty, with no looks to attract our eyes. He was despised and rejected by people, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And as one from whom people hide their faces, he was despised and we esteemed him not. His appearance was so marred beyond human semblance and his form beyond that of the children of people. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that made us whole. And with his stripes, we are healed. Restore us, O Lord God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. O God, who before the passion of your only begotten Son reveals his glory upon the holy mountain, grant to us that we, beholding by faith the light of his countenance, may be strengthened to bear our cross and be changed into his likeness from glory to glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, Holy and mortal, have mercy upon us. Our artist for the sixth station is Alma Wavy. Alma, would you like to read your reflection? Alma, just tell us what did you draw? Um, I draw. Drew in the when a woman wipes the face of Jesus. And what did you tell me about your picture? Um. What did you tell me you thought Jesus was feeling? Uh, um. Remember? I think Jesus was feeling sad and hurt. And what did you tell me that you felt the woman was feeling? Happy to help him. Thank you, Alma. Seventh station, Jesus falls a second time. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth, for the transgression of my people was he stricken. But as for me, I'm a worm and no man. Scorned by all. And despised by the people. Almighty and ever living God, in your tender love for the human race, you sent your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, to take upon him our nature and to suffer death upon the cross, giving us the example of his great humility. 
Mercifully grant that we may walk in the way of his suffering and also share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. Our artist for station seven is Mary White. Mary, would you like to tell us about your reflection? Sure. I thought about how exhausted Jesus would have been, how he would have tried to catch himself from the fall, a protective and a human response. And the road must have been very rough and dusty. And falling, he probably abraded his palms. Wounds not deep, but bloody and painful, stinging and burning as his skin was scraped away. More insult and trauma was to come soon to the hands of Jesus. Those wounded hands that had once held the whip to drive out the money changers, hands that had broken bread and poured wine, hands that had blessed and comforted the sick and the lonely, the hands of a healer. Thank you, Mary. Eighth station, Jesus meets the women of Jerusalem. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. There followed after Jesus a great multitude of the people. And among them were women who bewailed and lamented him. But Jesus, turning to them, said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. Those who sowed with tears will reap with songs of joy. Teach your church, O Lord, to mourn the sins of which it is guilty and to repent and forsake them that by your pardoning grace, the results of our iniquities may not be visited upon our children and our children's children. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and mortal, have mercy upon us. Our artist for Station 8 is Larry Dugan. Larry? There is an interesting life of Jesus that I always turn to during Lent from a 1955 published book called The Urantia Book. Um, most of it's pretty esoteric to strike a major chord with me, but the life of Jesus creates us is a section that has a nice beauty in its description and keeps me coming back each year. The section on the woman of Jerusalem is significant enough to use here. And it reads, as the death perception, as the death procession passed along the narrow streets of Jerusalem, many of the tender-hearted Jewish women who had heard Jesus' words of good cheer and compassion and who knew of his life and loving ministry could not refrain from weeping when they saw him being led to such an ignoble death. As he passed by, many of these women be, beware, bewailed and lamented, and some of them even dared to follow along by his side. These women of Jerusalem were indeed courageous to manifest sympathy for Jesus, for it was strictly against the law to show friendly feelings for one who was being led forth to crucifixion. It was permitted the rabble to jeer, mock, and ridicule the con condemned, but it was not allowed that any sympathy should be expressed. 
though Jesus appreciated the manifestation of sympathy in his dark hour when his friends were in hiding, he did not want these kind-hearted women to incur the displeasure of the authorities by daring to show compassion on his behalf. Even at such a time as this, Jesus thought little about himself, only about the terrible days of tragedy ahead for Jerusalem and the whole Jewish nation. Thank you, Larry. Ninth station, Jesus falls a third time. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. I'm the man who has seen affliction under the rod of his wrath. He has driven and brought me into darkness without any light. He has besieged me and enveloped me with bitterness and tribulation. He has made me dwell in darkness like the dead of long ago. Though I call and cry for help, he shuts out my prayer. He has made my teeth grind on gravel and made me cower in ashes. Remember, O oh Lord, my affliction and bitterness, the wormwood and the gall. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter. And like a sheep that before its shearers is mute, so he opened not his mouth. O oh God, by the passion of your blessed Son, you made an instrument of shameful death to be for us the means of life. Grant us so to glory in the cross of Christ, that we may gladly suffer shame and loss for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and mortal one, have mercy upon us. Our artist for station nine is Michelle Piskey. <clears throat> Even flowers can grow in the wilderness. That's what Mother Angela preached on Ash Wednesday. My birthday flowers from two weeks earlier were fading. Jesus falls. So do flower petals, their stems drooping. My bouquet of sunflowers and roses dried for several weeks in Lent, and then I fixed them to this triptych screen laid on the kitchen floor. The staple gun made a violent sound as it drove the metal clips through the dying flower stems and into the wood frame. The bittersweet beauty of the faded flowers pointing down made me wistful and sad. Paddles and leaves scattered when I stood the screen in a corner. From dust pan to dust, clinging to beauty, these are the flowers of my Lent wilderness in 2021. Perhaps this image will live on as a Zoom background. Tenth station. Jesus is stripped of his garments. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross, I yes. have redeemed the world. When they came to a place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull, they offered him wine to drink mingled with gall. But when he tested it, 
he would not drink it. And they divided his garments among them by casting lots. This was to fulfill the scripture which says, they divided my garments among them. They cast lots for my clothing. They gave me gall to eat. And when I was thirsty, they gave me vinegar to drink. Lord God, whose blessed Son, our Savior, gave his body to be whipped and his face to be spit upon, give us grace to accept joyfully the sufferings of the present time, confident of the glory that shall be revealed through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and mortal one, have mercy upon mercy. us. Eleventh station. Jesus is nailed to the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. When they came to the place called the skull, there they crucified him. And with him, they crucified two criminals, one on the right, the other on the left, and Jesus between them. And the scripture was fulfilled, which says, he was numbered with the transgressors. They pierce my hands and my feet. They stare and gloat over me. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we reaching forth our hands in love may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you for the honor of your name, amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. Our artist for the 11th station is Alicia Escobar. Alicia composed this of wool and metal wire, Christ, and a paper speech bubble. Her statement. I wanted to try something new, and needle felting is a fun and creative way to make art. Twelfth station, Jesus dies on the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing near, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. And he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. When Jesus had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. And then crying with a loud voice, he said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And he bowed his head and handed over his spirit.
Christ for us became obedient unto death. Even death on the cross. O God, for our redemption, gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection delivered us from the power of our enemy. Grant us so to die daily to sin, that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his resurrection, who lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. Amen. Holy God, Holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. Our artist for station 12 is Chris Palmer. I look upon Jesus as he takes his last breath and I think of his personal sadness and the loss of his friends and day-to-day -day activities and companionship, the physical life of being in that place at that time and his mission there, all that Jesus is saying goodbye to, the grief he feels for this loss. Alongside this personal grief, he is at the same time moving into a new reality. His act of dying is his act of total submission, total loss of self, loss of his human body, and complete union with the Holy One. In this moment of death, could it be there is ecstasy. The words of the chant I chose are from Lamentations 1.12 in the gospel verses of Jesus' last words on the cross. In the scripture text at the start of the Lamentations verse, before all you who pass this way, is an interjection thought to be idiomatic, an ex exclamation of sorts. Most English Bibles translate the idiom as, is this nothing to you? A Hebrew Bible I have translates this as, may it not befall you. From both these versions, what I hear is, pay attention. Look upon this. This could be you. Don't look away. I am reminded that Catholic churches always have a crucifix at the front, the cross with the bloody corpus hanging on it. I've always thought the corpus was there to make the viewer feel guilty, to remind people of the price paid for their sins, and to make people obedient. But today I have a new perspective. I can look upon the corpus and see a human who has entirely lost the self to attain union with God, union with the source. Not just denying the ego, but simply giving up everything to gain oneness. Not just in a one-time act, but in every moment of every day. This is ecstasy, a freedom. So I'm asking myself, could I go so far as to wear a crucifix?
13th station. The body of Jesus is placed in the arms of his mother. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. All you who pass by, behold and see if there is any sorrow like my sorrow. My eyes are spent with weeping. My soul is in tumult. My heart is poured out in grief because of the downfall of my people. Do not call me Naomi, which is pleasant. Call me Mara, which means bitter. For the Almighty has dealt very bitterly with me. Her tears run down her cheeks. And she has none to comfort her. Lord Jesus Christ, by your death, you took away the sting of death. Grant to us your servants so to follow in faith where you have led the way, that we may at length fall asleep peacefully in you and wake up in your likeness. For your tender mercy's sake. Amen. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. Our artist for station 13 is Alicia Escobar. This is acrylic on canvas. And Alicia says, I wanted the scene to only include Mary and Jesus, to focus on their relationship. Fourteenth station, Jesus is laid in the tomb. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross, 
you have redeemed the world. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who also was a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. And Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen shroud and laid it in his own tomb, which he had hewn in the rock. And he rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb. You will not abandon me to the grave. Nor let your Holy One see corruption. O oh God, your blessed Son was laid in the tomb in a garden and rested on the Sabbath day. Grant that we who have been buried with him in the waters of baptism may find our perfect rest in his eternal and glorious kingdom where he lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Holy God, holy and holy mighty, and holy and mortal one, one, have mercy upon us. Upon us. Savior of the world, by your and precious blood, you have redeemed us. Save us and help us. We humbly beseech you, O Lord. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that you have delivered us from the dominion of sin and death and brought us into the kingdom of your Son. And we pray that as by his death he has recalled us to life, so by his love, he may raise us to eternal joys, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. To Christ our Lord who loves us and washed us in his own blood and made us a kingdom of priests to serve his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Our artist for the stage closing devotion is Emily Wavy. Emily? Yeah. Um, so this closing devotion made me think of um, transformation. And in um, Godly Play, we like to say that the mystery of Easter is so big that it holds all the sorrow and all the joy like the picture we have a guy like play for Good Friday and Easter are attached. So you can't have one without the other. So what I try to do here is um, show a symbol of uh, transformation and connection. So it's actually in um, two layers. This is the top layer, um, just sort of the 
desert and the circles underneath there's 40 circles here the 40 representing like the the number of transformation the 40 days in the wilderness the 40 days of lent and um something will be growing in those circles there's a few other um symbols that i used um these three um gray things are meant to be like stones so that uh, uh, they kind of recall the three crosses you think of Jesus in the middle and the other two crosses, but also the shape was meant to think of the stone that's rolled away from the tomb, you know, a, a few days later. Um, and then the caterpillar is a symbol of transformation, looking toward the butterfly that it will become. And then the next layer, um, yeah. So in the next layer that slides under the bottom, you can see the, the flowers growing in and um, the flowers are underground, but, I don't know if you can see them very well, um, but so I made them in white and purple. So the color symbolism is like we have purple. Usually we associate with Lent and white with Easter. So they're kind of combined here. Um, each flower has eight petals. And I actually didn't know that eight was um, a number that's actually used to also used to symbolize resurrection. Mm -hmm. We always think of three, but um, sometimes in um, traditional Western paintings, eight was used as a number. Um, because there was eight days between the entry into Jerusalem and the resurrection. Um, and then the last layer is when you <laughs> slide the bottom back out. Um, now the caterpillar is gone and we have the butterfly and the flowers. And so this is sort of the, uh, the coming into Easter and the kingdom of God. Uh, Do you guys want to say anything? <laughs> okay. Thank you, Emily. Thank you, Mark, for coordinating this, for making certain that Artist Stations of the Cross continues on at St. Bart's. And thanks to all the artists, such creativity. It's fantastic. It's wonderful. It's a hidden jewel. We got to take this on the road and market it. And thanks for everybody uh, who tuned in for this. And uh, may God continue to bless you as we journey farther into Holy Week. Don't forget the other opportunities that are coming up, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then the joy of Eastertide on Sunday. Thank you all. Thank you to the artists. Thank you. Bye.